as a leader, we either go, it's my way or the highway, and you can kick rocks and pound sand if you don't like it, or yeah. I have to bend backwards for every single problem that comes my way to appease you. Um, there's got to be a balance here. How do we know when to be flexible or when to be forceful? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great, I've actually got a chapter on that. I, I believe people bring with them various uh, expectations, various um, assumptions, and then various demands. And I think leaders do well to, now this is another emotional intelligence piece, but I need to know, is that an expectation? Or is that a hope that you bring, but you don't need it, it's just a hope? Or is that a demand? And I think sometimes, particularly in our polarized world today, people treat an expectation like a, like a demand, and it really isn't. But when I say now, is that something you have to have? Because if it is, I probably should show you to the door. You're probably not gonna fit well here because we're just not gonna be able to do that. And you, you may deserve that. But if I realize, expect, here's my theory, and I, and I, and I say this in this book, uh, conflict expands based on the distance between expectations and reality. In other words, the wider that gap is, the more that conflict will, will take shape. So here's an example. If I tell my wife I'm gonna be home at seven for dinner and I get home at 7.10, not a big deal. If I get home at 9.15, it's a big deal. It's a wider gap. Now, exactly. And it's not because my wife can't live without me for two hours, it's because I created an expectation and I'm thinking this is a gigantic issue, particularly with Gen Z and millennials and Xers and boomers all working together and maybe in silos because we just can't seem to figure each other out. Mm. And, you know, here at Entree Leadership, and you align with this in the book, we talk about, you know, it's good to be forceful when it comes to your values and your yes, principles. No Those doubt. we're not yeah. going to budge on. This is who we are. And if this is not for you, there's got to be another place out there that aligns with what you believe. But when it comes to our well, processes, you know, when it comes to things that we're like, oh, okay, th we're not going to die on this hill. We can be flexible yeah on this, that's the kind of filtering that I think creates great leadership. No doubt about it. In fact, that was very, very well put. You're right. And know your core, that you just are gonna die, die on that hill. And then when that's violated, you go, you know, this is just not gonna work out. But on almost everything else, my gosh, the world is changing. That's an understatement. And I think we just need to be, especially as we age, open to say there might be a new way to reach this goal that I didn't see, but Tony did, you know? That sort of thing. Mm. Well, we've seen this, you know, coming from the church world for decades yeah. now. As the the older folk in the church, you know, they yeah. start to to die off, and the younger generations come, and there's that tension that's there of we want to do it this way, and we have a different style, and it takes a long time. And the people that have won both in the business world, and the church world, and the leadership world, they have run towards it and leaned into it yes. instead of pushed against it. And so sad that they had to plant a new church instead of join an existing church. And, and I'm not saying plant, church planting is bad, it's awesome, but so sad that they weren't welcomed in. So part of the research in this book is fascinating to me, George. Raymond Cattell was a British um, psychologist who published some research about 50 years ago. And he said, in your first 40 years, you mostly experience fluid intelligence. In your next 40, crystallized intelligence. Now, we have both, but it's mostly one or the other. Fluid intelligence is all about innovation, adaptation, creativity. Crystallize is mostly about I can summarize, I can crystallize, I can, you know, I can clarify, I can teach, that sort of thing. Don't we need both? We need the coach and the creator. And I think if we can find each other, now Gen Z becomes a competitive advantage rather than a wall. It's a bridge to the future. And That's I huge. just absolutely believe we've got to do this or we're going to die.